Um, I'm Grace. I work at the University of Michigan Museum of Art. And um, these are some of my favorite sessions that are parts of being a museum educator is work just hearing from others and feeling like part of a community. So when I got the email from Kate and Gwen saying like, does anybody have something that you've done recently or that you feel qualified to share? I never ever feel like an expert at anything. And so I just was like, what if I lean into something that not that I don't, not that I hate it, but that like never I get, I never get around to it or something I need support with. So um, that's where we are today. One other thing about um, this is that with permission, like a good friend um, recently lost a spouse and has young kids. And um, I know this seems really heavy, but we're quite close. And she just said, um, you know, the day before he passed, she said, could you be with me and do the memorial. Like, could you plan the memorial for him with me? Because that is just something that I can't, I can't do alone. And I just need you to sit next to me while I do the invite list. Like you don't have to do anything, just sit next to me. And that is where the, in that spirit, that is the session of like the hard things that we know we need to do. Um, and maybe we can't, maybe we can cancel them, but, but like, we probably need to do these things, but like that we need some support of colleagues along the way. So that is um, where we're going. If you have um, a piece of paper next to you or some brainstorm or another tab, I mean, you probably are eating lunch and doing email at the same time that you're watching this. So that's totally legit because it's, a, probably a docent training day for most of us. Um, and you're trying to do lots of things at once. So um, participate as you, as you are able today. Um, it's not a high bar. So I'm going to share my screen and um, I'm only on one laptop here. So this is where I'm coming from. Everybody, can you, can you get a quick thumbs up if you can see it? You see it? Okay, great. Um, this is the University of Michigan Museum of Art. We're a campus museum. We're kind of a midsize. We've got about, you know, 40 active docents post currently, um, and like maybe 130 on the um, roster hanging in there. Um, we lead tours about once a day, once um, to K-12 students and, um, People met with memory loss. And so that's kind of our, we have a staff of about 40 full-time. So um, here are the alternate titles for today. How to push against the tyranny of the urgent. There's always a tour at my heels, like tomorrow. Like what do I need to, what email do I send, need to send today so that people show up to a meeting tomorrow? And like, what is, what about docent training next Monday? So that's always there. Um, how do I tackle the task I need to do and um, not let my colleagues down and have them think I'm a complete like failure? So that is what I was coming out of today. Um, this chart of like important and urgent, do it right away. It feels like everything is always red to me. Like, and I am wondering, how to actually get into the other quadrants of like, no, this, this thing that I need to do is important and I need to carve out time now so that I'm a decent person to my family and my colleagues so that I'm not stressed about it at, at the end. Um, so if we could take literally like two minutes and if you could just name the thing for you that is um, you like a task that might not be a, like it might be occasional. It might take uh, it might be like cleaning out that art supply closet because after every family art day, you just shove stuff in there because you have to leave quickly and you get like, I'll do it later and then you can't find the colored pencils. Um, could be like an admin task, like background checking that you do like every two years or something. 
could be um, revising a volunteer handbook or policy. It could be observing tours. So like a task that you might not hate, a task that you're probably competent at, but that like really nags and takes up an inordinate amount of brain space for you. That if you could like get it off and get it done, that would be great. Um, my personal case is marketing newsletters. I can do them. I get decent feedback on them. Like these are actually kind of fun to read from people when they read them. I just never get them done in time. Um, if you can, please add it to the chat if you feel comfortable. So like, Hey, up. how are you feeling? Uh, a lot better than I was last week. I can't see everybody, so maybe mute. Um, uh, email. <laughs> yes, catching up on email totally counts. Um, like getting to the emails. Um, statistics, yes. Uh, I'm wondering if we can, like, um, I told Kate this is my not-so-secret agenda to compile these and see if there's one or two items that as a field, as a collective group here, we are sort of not struggling with, but like we really could stand to tackle together. And then, um, yeah, it, like evaluations, um, maybe coming up with some form and then scheduling time to do it. Um, but I'm wondering next year, in for the NAEA conference after we dwell on this, if anybody would be willing to propose with me like a session, a work session where we really tackle some of these ideas as a field. So um, keep them coming in as we as we keep going. Thanks for putting them in the chat. So as we go through, I'm just going to move through a few different like stages. And my goal today is to, um, you know, share my foibles and also like kick myself in the pants so that I get one action item done today. And I hope that you too can leave with like a little tiny bit of uh, momentum towards your task. Um, this seems like I'm writing or sharing a self-help book and I'm like really not in business land, um, but like share your why. Um, please just keep this to yourself. Like, why am I doing this again? Like, I know why I'm writing newsletters. My manager is, my boss is amazing. And he's always reminding me of like, we're here to just remind people that we're still available. We're supporting them. Um, Newsletters are supposed to drive attendance and registration. We want people to be like, ooh, what's going on over there? I want to be a part of it. Um, I have never shared an impact story. I know they're supposed to do that, but I just forget and I never do it. So that is one thing I could work on. Um, oopsies. Audience, who is your audience for this task? Like. Who benefits from you doing it, from evaluations or from whatever your task is? Um, who pays the price if you don't do it or if you don't do it on time? And then what's your, for me, I thought about what's my tone in my newsletter? Like how, do, what's my voice um, towards that audience? Is it light? Is it funny? Um, and sometimes that helps me get around to actually doing it because I can just like, if I can be in my natural voice, I can do it faster. Um, for me, the audience of the newsletters are like K-12 educators, docents, parents, and donors. And they all require a little bit of a different voice. And I think that's where my, some of my challenge lies that I'm like trying to struggle to like think about my audience. Um, risks. Like if I don't do this thing or if I do it and I do it poorly, what's at stake? What can go wrong? Um, also, if I do it, how good will I feel? Um, I was running yesterday with my 
neighbor friend who's a physician and I, she asked what I was doing for the rest of the day. And yes, I did this last night that I, I put this presentation together yesterday and I said, I'm making slides for a presentation and, um, told her what I was about. And she had immediately, she's like, oh, 30 years ago, my mom had to do this kind of thing. And she still remembers like the stress in their household. She was a child and her mom had to write this newsletter thing once a month. And it, like the anxiety and the like anger that she brought into the household when she had, when her deadlines were there, it, she's like, it was called the community connection. So she had an extreme, like clear memory. Um, and so what's at stake is that I can become a very bad person to be around when I have this deadline. Um, the newsletters can be boring. They can be um, random content or this Tina Fey's rest and confused face. Um, they can be too frequent and overkill and I can like lose respect if I don't do them well or don't get them to my marketing colleagues on time. Sometimes risk can motivate, motivate me to do things is what I'm saying. Um, and then I thought like, who is doing this well? So if you're thinking about your task, like who is rocking it and, and does it like, can you steal their strategy? One, um, you may want to check out these resources. One is curated by Claire Bound. She has think, uh, kind of a company called Thinking Museum. And I encourage you to check that out too. In her newsletter, she's very clear. She's like, this comes out every Friday. It will be like three things. I won't ever sell your info. And here you go. It, it was, it's really clear and I know what to expect and I get it every Friday and I actually read it. So I thought she was doing well. Ann Arbor Art Center is a local um, art making space and they also send one out every Saturday morning. They're doing um, more activities. Um, yes, all of, I will share all my slides and um, these are links too. Yes, yes. Um, okay, and then I started to think about like the constraints. Um, if you are thinking also about like newsletters or a, a marketing task or some kind of like not regular task, like what are your parameters? Um, I have to stay on brand. I have to have a few people look at my newsletter. I can't just do whatever the hell I want. Sorry, this is recorded. Um, the marketing, I have to balance the marketing department workload. I have amazing, amazing colleagues, but they're also getting requests from uh, the events department. Um, they're putting out newsletters to 20,000 people regularly. Um, I have to think about the teacher's time. They're not gonna read a book. So they just need a really quick synopsis. Finally, what is getting in my way? Like, why are we not, why, why are, why am I not doing this thing that isn't that hard? It's, and then I really needed to get into the nitty gritty. I'm like, okay, the topic is open-ended. I have pretty open freedom for what I write. And that is actually a hurdle. Um, the format could be short or long. Sometimes I just can't find the right image. And I spend like two hours searching for this one photo and I get really annoyed and then I give up. And then, um, I feel like I need to do the whole thing at once. And sometimes I should just block an hour and do like a power hour and get it started and then, um, finish it up when I'm not, you know, like late at night or whenever I need to do it. Um, so think about a hurdle or hang up. Um, and then the final task is to think about what's under control. Um, and for my personal case study, I decided to focus on the format today. So what I'm going to do today is nail down 
one format that I'm going to stick with for all of my upcoming newsletters so that I don't have to create new content. I can just plug in like what I have and I don't have to think too much about it. So um, I'd love feedback on it in our little discussion section about like what you feel might be a digestible format for teachers and this audience. One possibility is like sharing one thing to read, one thing to watch, one thing to listen to, um, like from our content about what's coming up. Um, it could be, I'll share one thinking routine that teachers can use in their classroom related to art. It could be, I amplify a community resource, a partner, um, and then one upcoming event, like register for this teacher workshop. It could be like, here's a tip about how to talk to your kids about art. Here's a question I use in a tour. It could be featuring an upcoming exhibition. Get this on your radar. We're having a Hear Me Now exhibition about um, potters from Edgefield, South Carolina in the fall. Um, and then maybe they love like behind the scenes, like, what does a conservate, what happened? How many objects do we have in storage? How many are on display? They love like those little tidbits. So um, that is what I'm going to do today. My task is to address the hurdle of the format so that uh, that's one last thing I need to decide when I'm writing my newsletter. I actually looked up the date. It's due April 6th. So I have two months. So that's what I need to do. Um, so I guess during our like time um, together, this session was more about process than about like, if we all have um, different hurdle, different, you know, like difficulties, conundrums, it could be evaluation. Um, it's more about helping each other with the strategies for how to get over that hurdle to get it done so that we can move on. Um, so maybe we can offer like one tip to each other about like, for example, I wrote an article with a colleague who's a curator and we would schedule a one hour writing session and we would zoom in, we would turn off our cameras and we would say, you write this chunk, I'll write this chunk. We're coming back in 30 minutes and we're gonna share it. And we couldn't bail on each other, we had to show up. Um, but if we had just had meetings to like share our progress and then said, okay, by the next meeting, write your paragraph and then come back, I wouldn't have, I would have done it like at 1 a.m. or I just wouldn't ever get to it. So the time in the day scheduled with a computer in front of me and a friend um, helped me. Um, these are only some suggestions. Could you shrink the task? Could you make it less frequent? Could you do quarterly newsletters instead of monthly? Could you, um, have an intern do it? Could you, um, cancel something else and switch out that time so that you actually like clean that closet or, um, make the phone, schedule the phone call for the background check or whatever you need to do. Um, I would love to continue the conversation. Like you could just email me and be like, Hey, I'm really struggling with this thing. And I would say, I am sorry. I am too. And like collectively share the, feel like we're, we're together in this. Um, I think that's all I got. So I guess two goals. One, just share that we're in this, um, together and two, um, love to hear some collective like ideas for how to tackle especially marketing newsletters but other other tasks that are daunting thank you grace um do you want me to i can go ahead and hit pause on the recording and we can be sure to share the chat to this point um, and i think that that will go on the naea youtube page okay that sounds great.